on World News Tonight. Land makes landfall. Typhoon Lan reaches Japan as warning sirens blaze across the western region of the country. No vendetta. Former Pakistani Prime Minister asserts no agenda is being leveled against the now jailed ex leader Imran Khan. More fires. France braces for more wildfires as flames blaze through several hundred hectares of terrain. And felt fields. New York artists make hand sewn bagels out of the felt in Felt's Bagel Bakery. is Adha Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and you are joining us on World News. We begin tonight as Japan's Kyoto region bore the brunt of Typhoon Lan. As evacuation warnings have been issued to more than 237,000 people across 11 prefectures in Japan as precautionary measures. Typhoon Lan made landfall near Shinomisaki in Japan's Wakayama Prefecture, with winds nearing 160 km per hour, equivalent to a Category 2 hurricane. More than 26 people have been injured in five prefectures across western Japan as a result of the lashing typhoon. The powerful storm also caused power outages to tens of thousands of homes. Spokesperson from Japan's Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Tourism stated that all commercial flights out of Kansai, Chubu and Nagoya airports are currently suspended for the day, with more than 950 50 cancelled nationwide. Typhoon Lan follows Typhoon Kanun, which lashed southwestern Japan with wind and rain earlier this month. Like many other Asian countries, Japan has been grappling with deadly extreme weather this summer. In July, heavy rainfall in the southwest of the country led to flooding and mudslides, which left at least six people dead. The same month, Japan experienced intense heat waves with temperatures above 39 degrees Celsius in some places. Meanwhile, Pakistan's former Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has denied pursuing a personal vendetta against Imran Khan, his political rival and immediate predecessor, who was jailed and barred from politics on corruption charges. Speaking in his last interview before handing over to a caretaker leader, Sharif said victimization is not in his dictionary and accused Khan of shabby treatment of opposition leaders and putting them behind bars. Sharif, who spent seven months in prison after being jailed in 2020, said there was no question of any crackdown and personal vendetta. Imran Khan was arrested at his home in Lahore by hundreds of police officers after a court found the former international cricketer guilty of corrupt practices involving the sale of state gifts and sentenced him to three years in prison. According to the constitution, that means Khan is automatically banned from politics for five years. Khan has denied all wrongdoing and his lawyer said the former prime minister would be appealing against the ruling, calling it a case of political victimization. Now over in France, more than 3,000 tourists have been evacuated from a popular holiday destination after a devastating wildfire ripped through homes and campsites overnight. Holidaymakers fled from four campsites close to Spanish border as flames spread across 500 hectares of land. Middle of the night and tourists carrying suitcases are making their way back to the campsite, having left in a hurry a few hours earlier. They told us we could go back. We're the first campsite to be able to come back, so we're a bit relieved. But not everyone was so lucky. One of the four evacuated campsites, partially burnt, will have to stay closed for now. About 2,000 people, tourists and residents, had to sleep in a seven shelters open for the night including in a town of saint I just wanted to get out of here. With all that smoke, the blazes, it was stressful. The fire started here just after 5 o'clock and quickly spread over hundreds of acres. A violent fire, fueled by a drought and whirling winds reaching 80 kilometers per hour, complicating the firemen's work. Some residents tried to extinguish the fire on their own. I'm protecting my house as much as I can. We've been watering the bushes for a while because everything that flies burns. More than 650 firemen were mobilized. Some came from neighboring counties. They were supported through the night by eight Canadairs, three firefighting aircrafts and three helicopters. 20 firemen were injured, but for now, the fires have been contained. 
Now, unending chaos surrounds the war in Ukraine as Russian airstrikes hit two western regions of Ukraine, bordering NATO member Poland and other areas, killing three people and wounding more than a dozen. Handshakes and long discussions with soldiers. On Monday, Volodymyr Zelensky travelled to the Donetsk region to meet troops on the Eastern Front near Solidar. It is important to speak directly with the soldiers about the war experience of those who are in the positions. Today there were detailed and candid discussions about our offensive actions, supply to the military forces, commanders' capabilities. Ukraine said on Monday that it had driven Russian forces out of small areas of territory as part of its grueling counteroffensive launched in June. Ukraine's deputy defence minister said that Kyiv had gained a pocket of land around the war-torn city of Bakhmut last week. In the Bakhmut sector, three square kilometres were liberated last week. In total, 40 square kilometres have been liberated on the southern flank of the Bakhmut sector. Ukrainian authorities also claimed progress in the south. On social media, Zelensky thanked the US for recently agreeing to send Ukraine new security assistance worth $200 million. But fighting continues in Ukraine. Several people, including a newborn baby, were killed by Russian shelling in the Kherson region on Sunday. North Korea says U.S. soldier Private Travis King, who crossed into North Korea last month, is in the regime seeking refuge because of maltreatment and discrimination by the U.S. Army. It is the North's first public confirmation of the soldier. It's nearly a month since U.S. soldier Private Travis King dashed into North Korea. And North Korea's state-run Korean Central News Agency reported on Wednesday that during an investigation into his crossing, the soldier expressed a willingness to seek refuge there or in a third country. The KCNA also said that King had decided to come over to the regime as he harbored ill feeling against inhumane maltreatment and racial discrimination within the U.S. Army. This is the first public confirmation by North Korea on King's status, who on July 18th crossed the military demarcation line from South Korea to North Korea during a civilian tour of the Joint Security Area. Previously, the U.S. had sought information on King, but the North had only responded to U.N. command's request to confirm custody of Travis King. The KCNA report shows North Korean investigators concluded that King crossed deliberately and illegally with the intent to stay in the North or in a third country. U.S. officials also believe King's crossing was intentional, citing free will, with debates still ongoing on whether he should be classified as a prisoner of war, which will grant him certain rights. The report says investigations will continue while it remains unclear when Travis King will be released from custody. Before crossing into the North, Travis King spent 48 days in prison in South Korea and was due to face disciplinary action in the U.S. Let's go for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. Now, rescue efforts are underway in Hawaii as a mobile morgue unit arrived to help Hawaii officials working painstakingly to identify the remains of people killed in wildfires that ravaged Maui. As the death toll rose above 100 and teams intensified the search for more dead in neighborhoods reduced to ash. U.S. Marines land on Maui, joining the National Guard, Coast Guard and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers as recovery efforts continue. In the historic seaside town of Lahaina, nearly every building is destroyed. Entire neighborhoods now nothing but rubble and ash. As volunteers work to provide basic necessities, survivors are struggling to process the aftermath of the U.S.'s deadliest wildfire in more than a century. I was devastated. I was a wreck. I needed mental health. You know, and I considered myself a strong leader, but it broke me. It's, it still breaks me. This is what keeps me going, helping people. A lot of us are, are at that stage. Officials on the island say that as of Monday, only a quarter of the disaster zone had been fully searched for bodies. The death toll is expected to rise. Hundreds of people are believed still missing. Many residents have expressed frustration at an apparent lack of official disaster preparedness. Warning sirens failed to sound as the fire bore down on the town, 
with road closures trapping drivers as they tried to flee and fire hydrants running out of water. Nothing would make us more pleased if we couldn't go back in time and have a lot more protection from sirens. We will do all we can to get more water. We will do all that we can to get more warnings for people. Investigations are currently underway into the cause and response to the fire. High winds and drought worsened by climate change, along with the rapid spread of flammable invasive grasses, have made wildfires a growing concern on Maui in recent years. Russian President Vladimir Putin and Mali's interim president Asimi Goita had a telephone conversation over events unfolding in Niger, a development that is likely to raise concerns among Western leaders about Russia's increasing influence in the West African region. Russian President Vladimir Putin spoke with Mali's military leader in a phone call on Tuesday about the recent coup in Niger. That's according to a social media post from Mali's interim president, posted on social media platform X formerly known as Twitter. The call adds to growing fears from the West over Russia's influence in Western Africa. Niger has strategic significance for the United States, China, Europe, and Russia, and has served as a hub for foreign forces fighting a regional Islamist insurgency. It also has a wealth of uranium and oil resources. In a statement, the Kremlin said the call was initiated by Mali, and was focused on ending the situation, quote, through peaceful, political, and diplomatic means. As the West loses influence in the region, support for Russia has grown. Since President Mohamed Bazoum was ousted in late July, coup supporters have been seen at rallies, waving Russian flags. Military leaders in Mali and Burkina Faso have kicked out troops from former colonial power France while strengthening ties with Moscow. Under Bazoum, Niger remained a Western ally. The US, France, Germany, and Italy have troops stationed there under agreements with the now deposed civilian government. Putin has called for a return to constitutional order in Niger, while Wagner's chief has welcomed the army takeover and offered his services. Tonight's Road to the White House, we bring you the latest updates on the GOP front amidst the many legal troubles ex-President Donald Trump is being confronted with. While some backers worry he is a liability in 2024, Trump is still winning, at least the polls indicate that. However, the spotlight on his closest challenger, Ron DeSantis, has been shifted to the Republican presidential primary in New Hampshire, Chris Christie. Donald Trump enjoyed a 40-point lead in the survey from Emerson College, that was broadly in line with the 91 times indicted former president's lead in most national and early voting state polls. Chris Christie, a former New Jersey governor and former Trump friend and ally, was second with 9% support, a point ahead of DeSantis, the Florida governor whose campaign is widely seen to be tanking. The poll also asked New Hampshire voters about a hypothetical general election. Joe Biden led Trump by seven points, 48% to 41% up three points since March. Now, ahead of the trilateral summit between South Korea, the US and Japan, America's top diplomat Antony Blinken says ensuing meetups will be a historic one that forges the three nations' security alliance. The US has expressed high hopes for Friday's trilateral summit at Camp David. Uh, President Biden will host Japanese Prime Minister Kishida and South Korean President Yoon at Camp David to mark what we believe is a new era in trilateral cooperation among our countries. He added that he had spoken with his counterpart, South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin and Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi to prepare for the summit. He added that the summit came at a critical moment when the world is being tested by geopolitical competition, the climate crisis, Russian aggression against Ukraine, and the nuclear provocations. He added that the heightened engagement is part of a broader effort to strengthen alliances and partnerships between the three countries. Strengthening our trilateral cooperation is critical to delivering for our people, for the region, and for the world. It helps us promote peace and stability and furthers our commitment to the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. 
Earlier, the Washington Post reported that the three leaders are expected to announce plans for expanded military cooperation on ballistic missile defense and technology development, quoting two senior Biden administration officials. There are also reports that the so-called Camp David principles will be announced strengthening the trilateral ties. Pundits say, though, the summit could anger North Korea and that Beijing is already expressing discomfort over the summit. China opposes relevant countries forming various cliques and their practices of exacerbating confrontation and jeopardizing other countries' strategic security. But experts said the U.S. has a strong motivation to use the momentum of improved South Korea-Japan relations to strengthen trilateral ties. Welcome back after more news. Let's take you around the world in a minute. Australia's first multi-projection cinema is opening its doors in Queensland. The 270-degree screen called Screen X is set to open at Robina on the Gold Coast. As the Women's World Cup has proven unpredictable, major global marketers such as Adidas and Nike move fast to adapt to shoppers' quick shifts in preferences and demand by expanding the range of their products. President Joe Biden states that he will travel to Hawaii as soon as he can to review recovery efforts from wildfires that swept across Maui that killed dozens of people. A forest fire broke out between Arafo and Canberra in Tenerife, Canary Islands, burning more than 130 hectares. The towns of Arate, Chivi, Media Montana and Asia Fauna were evacuated as a precaution. Arab foreign ministers met in Cairo to discuss steps Syria must take to reinstate ties with the Arab world. And that is all we have for you on World News tonight. If you missed any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than English. We're leaving you tonight at the Feltz Bagels Bakery in Montauk, New York, where the bagels are made entirely out of felt. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.